thank you all for coming. I don't think you've come to see me. You've come to hear about the title. <coughs> this is the first time I've given this talk, so I'm a bit nervous, and I'll be very grateful for your criticisms. You can be blunt. You can't frighten me with your criticism. It will be very helpful. It's based on a book that I'm writing called Why Can't a Woman Be More Like a Man, which will be published next, <laughs> next, next spring. <laughs> However, the title I really wanted, Why Isn't a Man More Like a Woman? And you'll see why I come to that in a moment. Because one of the things I'm going to say is that men are basically modified women. But we'll come to that all in a moment. And so what it's really about is to try and understand. I am a, I'm a biologist, <clears throat> and I wanted to understand the biological differences between men and women and how much the differences between men and women were determined by biology as distinct from social distinct from, from so, so, so social factors. How different are our brains? Um, what role has evolution played? And just do remember, you are nothing more than a society of cells, OK? You do know, you do say that every night before you go to sleep. I, I, <laughs> you are a society of cells, and that determines everything. And the way cells function is largely by determining what proteins there are. Genes are boring. But they provide the code. Genes do nothing. They just sit there, totally passive. But they provide the code for making proteins, and proteins determine how cells work. It's, lo it's largely proteins. And it's quite interesting. In an interview to mark his 70th birthday, Stephen Hawking, the famous physicist, admitted that he spent most of the day thinking about women. You know what he said? They are, he said, a complete mystery. Now, if one looks back in history, the striking thing about men and women is that men have discriminated against women over, for as far back as you want to go. You know, there has been no time when men have not discriminated uh, against women. They were given the prime, men were given the primary responsibility. Women were there to look after the home and to look after the children and has been subordinate. And if you just look back at one of the stories, I'm not going to take you through all those details. Think of the legend of Pandora. Do you remember the legend of Pandora? Let me remind you. And that of Eve. Pandora was the Greek one. And she had taken, she'd given this very sacred bottle. And she let things slip out. And evil, therefore, came onto the world for the first time. And I don't have to remind you what Eve did. So in two completely different cultures, Greek and Christianity, the women are the cause of all evil. <laughs> I forgive you, I don't think it's true. <laughs> now, I think you have to realize that a crucial thing is we're talking about men and women, is that how you develop really matters. And as I told you, I am a developmental biologist, so this matters a great, a great deal to me. And as Mark Twain said, what would men be without women? Scarce, sir. Mighty scarce. <laughs> the best thing about my talk are my funny quotations. <laughs> now, the early development of the embryo is identical for men and women. OK? I see someone's nodding. He knows. <laughs> OK. The sexual differences begin to develop later. And it's really because if there's a Y chromosome, that comes from the man, that causes the embryo to develop testes. And testes cause the uh, result in the secretion of testosterone. And therefore, that modifies the developing embryo to develop as a male. Because the Y chromosome is the male chromosome. So all you ladies have XX chromosomes. We poor males have X and Y. And the Y chromosome makes the embryo masculine by causing a testis to develop. There are other genes too, I'm not going to take you through, but the main thing is that it leads, the testis leads to the secretion of testosterone, which modifies the embryo to develop as a male. So in that sense, males are modified females because this test, the Y chromosome has modified female development to develop into a male. I, I, I hope that's clear. And 
You can ask, why do males have breasts and nipples? We don't feed many babies, I have to say, and they're not terribly sensitive or attractive. <laughs> and the reason is that they're developed in females, and that, since males are modified females, they were just left there when the embryo developed. It didn't have any influence on them whatsoever. And just let me remind you that testosterone, you know, the male hormone, is crucial. And there is an, a, a genetic illness called CAH, congenital adrenal hyperplasia, which results in there being more testosterone in the womb than normal. And I'll come back to the impact of that because we can see what effect it has. But first of all, let's have a quick look at evolution. Now, on the whole... If you look at the literature on the subject, most, there are many books about, about the differences between men and women. Evolution is not something that most of them even touch on, but it's very important. The, the, first of all, it's just worth thinking, why bother to have two sexes? Wouldn't it? It would be less fun to have just one, but why? Because I, I'm not going to take you through, it's quite a complicated biological problem, but it's a way of generating more variety. And evolution cares about variety. And just let me tell you, evolution only cares about reproduction. It doesn't give a damn about anything else. It only cares how reproductive you are. I, I, I don't want to take you through. And that's why when you get old, evolution says, bye-bye, Dolly Gray, you've reproduced. I don't give a damn about you anymore. <laughs> now, what evolution did make sure is that both sexes wanted to get, needed to get pleasure from sex because that's what reproduction is about. And care of young children also had to be genetically determined, particularly in the mothers. And this has a great influence. Yes, maybe it's a little genetically determined in the fathers, but if I look at you and <laughs> I think about you and your husbands, yes, the fathers can be, but nothing compared to the thing. And the other things is just worth remembering from evolution. You must not mate with relatives. Brothers must not mate with sisters. You must not mate with a first cousin. Genetically, it's disastrous. That's incest. And this is also genetically determined for both men and women not to mate with them. And Charles Darwin had, I'm afraid to tell you, rather negative views of women. Man is more courageous, pugnacious, energetic than women and has a more inventive genius. Women seems to differ from man in mental disposition, chiefly in their greater tenderness and less selfishness. And I think he's probably bloody all right on the second, on the second one. They are, and I'll come back to the tenderness in a moment. So there was mating behaviour historically and it was probably the most vigorous and strongest males who had access to, to women, had the easiest access to women. And in general, it is that men more than women have, have a greater desire for casual sex. I don't think I have to, pers uh, 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 I don't think I have to persuade you on that score. Um, women are more really concerned about relationships, um, but men will do almost anything for sex. Well, I mean, if there's a nice relationship too, how very nice. Now, <laughs> in ancient societies, the supplies of food were largely provided by women, while the, when men went out, you know, protecting and hunting for big food, it's the women who developed agriculture. It's very important to do. They made major technical contributions. Women's food-gathering activity led to animal domestication and agriculture. You women discovered agriculture, I have to tell you. You also discovered cooking, and you also evolved um, making pots. All that was done by women. And when your agriculture became better, the men stopped going out hunting and came home and took over all your inventions and took them for themselves. I'm terribly sorry, that's the way things went. But just remember, they then became, because of their physical strength, became more dominant. Now, how different are the men's brains different from women? 
I just want to tell you another quote from George Carlin. Here's all you have to know about men and women. Women are crazy and men are stupid. And the main reason women are crazy is because men are stupid. <laughs> Now, a, le a, leading, a, a leading neurologist has said that clear sex differences, differences between male and female, differ in every part of the brain. This is a controversial area, I, I have to tell you, because although you can see some of these differences when you do, you know, you cut up the brain, their function is not all that clear. And there are evidence that different genes Many, a thousand or so different genes are expressed differently in the brains of men and women. But two of the main books on the difference between men and women, one by Cordelia Fine and the other one by whatever her name is, I, um, I can't remember it for a moment, but Cordelia Fine in her book Delusions of Gender, the real science behind sex differences, doesn't believe in genes. She actually says genes do not determine how our brains develop, but constrain them. What she really says, she, I haven't got a clue about biology, and that's why I'm going to write this nonsense. <laughs> it, 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 it really is really uh, unspeakable. Um, that's all I can say. <laughs> and then, if you actually look at brains, there are a few ones. There's a thing associated with emotion called the amygdala, which shows greater functional connectivity in men. And women show significant greater activity in the left when remembering emotional pictures. And there are hundreds and hundreds of studies looking at the brain <clears throat> in various ways because you can do MRI studies on the brain and to see how women and men respond when they're shown different things. It's, it's controversial. There's no question it's very controversial and it's not well understood but there certainly are very big differences. There's also certain brain structures which even women who are against all this uh, thing. There's what is called the third interstitial nucleus of the anterior hypothalamus. That's two and a half times larger in men and it really determines maleness. There's a structure in male brains which actually has a major role in making men men and if you're a homosexual, it's much, it's much smaller. It's very much smaller. And female, and um, that's right. Females also have less grey matter and less white matter. Grey matter in the brain refers to the, the nuclei of the nerve cells. White matter refers to the long signaling region of the cell. And women have more grey matter. And that may result in them processing representing in what it may mean that this may explain, may be careful, that why men tend to do a bit better in maths while women tend to excel at an integrating and assimilating information such as that required for language. But, the, but this, is, this is tricky come, stuff. I'll come back to maths in a moment, but there are major differences in the brain. There's just no question, there's just no question about that. Now, if we come to, if you want a good evidence that there are genetic differences between males and females, look at the newborn children. At birth, girls look longer at a face and boys look longer at a suspended mobile, mechanical mobile. That's the, 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 no one's ever contradicted that. That, that, that. That's standard stuff. And as young as 12 months, the, uh, the uh, girls make more eye contact and behave more sympathetically to the distress of others. Now, this cannot be social learning when you're doing when you're within 12 months. It's clearly genetically determined. Also, little boys are more physical than girls, and at two year old, and also, you know, they're bigger. And at two years, they're already better at certain sports like throwing and banging things about. And if you look at the toys young children play with, there's a very big difference from the beginning. Boys like mechanical objects. 
they may for a little while l l like dolls, but in general there is a very big difference in the play behaviour of young children. The boys like mechanical things, the girls like other things. However, if the girl's mother has what I told you, C-A-H, that is that in the womb, this child was more exposed to testosterone, then they have more male typical play. And this shows how biology can have a, a major effect on people's behaviour and it has nothing to do with social behaviour. There is also some evidence that girls actually do prefer pink, whether this is socially determined or not, but there is some evidence that that's the case. OK, so we're, 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 I'm doing better going faster than I thought. Then we come to sex. And then there's a nice quote from Virginia Woolf. Why are women so much more interesting to men than men are to women? <laughs> They like sex, I told you. <laughs> so sex, a lot of sexual activity is not devoted to having children. And can I just point out to you that in Australia, amongst the Aborigines, they don't have a clue that sex gives rise to children. You know, it's quite difficult. If you're in a primitive society, how in the hell would you know that something you did last night in nine months <laughs> will give rise? Just think about it. How would you know? And there are many primitive societies where they do not have a clue that children come from sex. It doesn't stop them having sex because that's genetically determined. And um, another big genetic determination is that, in general, men like having sex with women and women like having sex with men. And that is a big genetic difference which is not, so far as we know, socially determined. There is a whole thing about homosexuality, but I, I, I'm not, I'm not, not a thing. Also, there's very good evidence that men are more sexually aroused, whereas women, as I pointed out, are much more or prefer it to be a linked to an emotional attachment. Now, while most women experience an orgasm, it's not usually associated with sex. A little masturbation can be quite helpful. Sorry, <laughs> I'm not asking you questions. <laughs> this, is what the, this is what the literature makes actually think. Women, I'm quoting here, do not consistently experience orgasm from sexual intercourse. And so why they have an orgasm, maybe it helps suck up the sperm from thing, but it's not clear. Whereas by, for man, having uh, an orgasm is associated with r releasing the sperm, so it's absolutely part of them. So it, it, it's the evolutionary aspect uh, of that. And another very big difference between men and women is the menopause. The menopause... You're too young. <laughs> the menopause is, is, is genetically determined, and the reason, the evolutionary reason for having a menopause is to stop the women reproduction and then they can help look after young children. That's the story anyhow. In other words, they can act as grandmothers. As I told you, what evolution cares about is reproduction. So anything which will help reproduction and menopause does help older women look after children. There is a sort of, um, Andrew, for, for, for male, there's a vague, there's a vague, uh, uh, menopause-like, I think, for men, but it, it's, it's not as clear. And now an interesting question is, how do men and women choose their sexual partner? What is it that really is the basis of sexual attractiveness, and what's its evolutionary basis? One would like to say that beauty, as we recognise it, is a good measure of one's partner's health. Unfortunately, the evidence ain't that good. But um, physical attractiveness does matter. And in general, it usually means that the woman has a good immune system. And that's really, you're nodding, you're agreeing. I, I'm, this is your subject. <laughs> that's all right. 
um, that they have a good immune system. That does lead to a problem, which I'll come back later, because women are much more uh, liable to get autoimmune uh, uh, diseases. But it's not clear. And I just want to say there is social differences. In certain African countries, they put rings around the female's neck to make the necks grow longer. And this is sexually, you know, it's impenetrable to me. This makes them more um, uh, uh, sexually uh, attractive. Nevertheless, in most European countries, men consistently prize physical attraction for their potential mates, while women value ambition, status, and money. That's what the story is in 37 countries. But as you can see, in certain African countries, being very large, having a big body, is very sexually attractive. In our society, it ain't like that. If you go back to the Renaissance, people were much more attracted by it. Now, why this is, this, is, this is not well understood and is certainly not genetically determined. So, so we do, we're not doing too badly. That's OK. And then if we come to the emotional nature of women, and if Stanley Baldwin said, I would rather trust a woman's instinct than a man's reason. Hmm, think on that. Women are much more emotional than men. There's no, absolutely no question. And a major difference between men and women, genetically determined, is aggression. Men are just physically bigger and stronger than women and are unquestionably more aggressive. And I don't have to tell you that all the physical crimes are, 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 are carried out by men. And if, you, if the mother of a girl had CAH, in which there was more testosterone in the woman, that woman will be more aggressive. There's no question about it. Now, the major emotion that distinguishes men from the thing, and this is Simon Baron Cohen's very important work, is empathy. Women are sensitive to other people's feeling and have a positive interest in others. This is genetically determined in them. This is empathy and probably comes from their evolutionary necessity of looking after children, because they have to look after children when they are young. Whereas men, by contrast, <clears throat> are more prone to be systemizers. That is, they have the intuitive ability to analyze and explore systems that control. Men are also much more risky and in all sorts of be behaviors. And they, they, you know, they'll do all sorts of risky things which women avoid. Women are much more mystical than men, much more religious. They pray more than men and will think. And women laugh more than men, although the men make the jokes, I think. <laughs> I'm not really sure whether that's true. But empathy and systemizing are two fundamentally genetically determinant characters of men and women. And empathy is genetically, evolutionally related to having, I think, look after children. <coughs> also, if we now look at the academic world, I've got, I got five minutes left? Wow, OK, that's not too bad. I Just a, a word about mathematics. There are fewer women in engineering and mathematics. And the, one of the reasons is women don't like going into those. If you're interested in empathy, the last thing you want to find yourself on is a building site. And that's why women don't go in there. And also, it turns out in relation to math, sorry, there's no intellectual difference between men and women. Zero. When it comes to IQ or any of those things, no difference whatsoever. But um, what it turns out is that if you look at the scores in maths of men and women, the range of scores in men is much greater than that in women. So you have some very low scorers and you have these very high scorers. And these are the brilliant male mathematicians that outbeat the women. But on average, there's no difference between their ability and mathematician. It's just that it's much more spread out, these abilities, in men than women. And we don't really understand that. And it's really socio-cultural factors that actually make women not want to go into various engineering tasks. And there are studies where women are well treated and have nice jobs and they're all there together, they can be. And when you come to um, skills, Voltaire said, I hate women because they always know where things are. 
and that's true. They have a much more meta memory of where things are, but they're much worse at certain visual uh, things, like being able to judge whether a thing, a shape, uh, two shapes, or three, or, uh, presented in three dimensions, are, are the same or not. And men are much better than that. Um, and women are bad at distinguishing between left and right. And they're also bad when you tilt the, the glass of water, what will be the level <laughs> in, the, in the glass? Women are not good about that. They're not good at two because physically they're not so good, but they're catching up on men in relation to the marathon. In relation to, to language, there are very few real differences between men and women. Women do not talk more than... Uh, 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 than, than women. There's no evidence for that or thing. What women say may be very different, but actually, in terms of skills, there's not. In terms of writing, it's quite striking. In the USA, most of the reviewers and the authors of books in the New York Review of Books are females not males. I was quite surprised by that figure. And what they write as thing, there is now a technique, you can take any text and the computer will tell you whether it was written by a man or woman. It's absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. And if we come to health, there are major differences between men and women. And as I told you, with autoimmune uh, uh, diseases, there really are very big uh, d uh, differences. Like multiple sclerosis is much more common in women. Autism is much more common, depression much more common in women, and there are all sorts of differences which show that there are, uh, 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 are differences. So let me just say men really are very different to women, and we must learn to accept that. And I think from the point of view of employment, there must be much more effort to make women feel more relaxed in their jobs and also that much more attention must be given to their ability to both work and look after their children. Thank you very much.